Happy Wednesday. Are you guys ready for the best show ever? Ever. Welcome to Date Now with Connie and Chrissy on a Wednesday. Who knew? I thought you were going to forget and say happy Friday. <laughs> no, I was not. I prepared I really all did. night. I'm your host, <laughs> Connie Henriquez, and this is my crazy co-host, Chrissy Bowe. What's up? And we have a very special gift for you tonight. We have a very special guest, Gerard Smith, who spent all week coming up with this famous <laughs> little ditty about date night with Connie and Chrissy. He, has, our, away, he has his very own theme song for us. Thank you, Gerard. Take it away. You know I love musicians. <laughs> date night with Connie and Chrissy on date night. Love. Date night with Connie and Chrissy on date night. Yeah. Oh yeah. man, I was just about to break out the lighter. I thought it was supposed to be a minute. I thought you were going to have verses. I thought it was you were going to talk about how beautiful we are they're, and they're, uh, they're, they're this consciously. Two hot girls it's it's in the middle. I'm in, I'm in the middle of the whole thing right now. It's, it's all Gerard, being, all right, it's you're going to come right. back. back next I will. Week. I will come Gerard, back. Gerard, we love week. you. I love you both. All right, so wait. Tell everybody where you're from, where they can find you. Uh, I'm from Manhattan, and you can find me, uh, where you can find me? Oh, GerardSmithMusic.com, <laughs> Facebook.com slash GerardSmithMusic, uh, Twitter.com slash GerardSmith, and uh, Instagram.com slash GerardSmithMusic. Where do you yeah. normally play? I play all over the country. I, wow. uh, yeah, I just kind of fly around and, uh, play all the place. I, I do a lot of colleges and stuff like that. All so right. Well, we you appreciate any... you flying in for us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I live in New York. I live in New York. Listen, Gerard, don't ruin it, okay? I, I feel I like took you flew a, in for I us. I took a boat here. Do okay. you have any albums? Yes. Yes. What's the name of the album? Uh, the Odessa EP. I it's love on, it. on uh, everything. Pandora, uh, iTunes, all that. What's your most popular song uh, that we should it's called, download? It's called Odessa. It's I love like it. A, what is it about? <laughs> is it about two hot girls on a date night? <laughs> funny, funny enough. Did you write it about us, Gerard? I, I did. I, I knew did. it. I didn't want to be awkward. I know. We appreciate your <laughs> honesty, though. Do you like Dave Matthews? I do. I do. I do. He's a cool guy. All right. Oh, Are you going to be at the concert this June? Which one? Jones Beach. Yeah, He's only playing yes. once. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll be there. All right. Well, All right, let's so tailgate fun. together in the parking lot, Gerard. Let's do Gerard it. Gerard Smith, who's very <laughs> awesome and has spent I just met him. I love him. coming up with our little ditty, and we appreciate it. <laughs> I know. And thanks for flying in to see us. No, he took a boat. He took a boat. Whatever. I jet skied here. I like Gerard. He's funny. <laughs> he jet skied. Whatever there. we had to do to get here, we All appreciate right. it. Try to come back with more uh, verses for us. Of course, of course. I know Wait, can you do a little Gray Street before you go? Sure. Hold on. He's got. Hold on. Hold on. Hold no on. Because he was just doing. No he just did it before. Gerard. Come on, for all my DMB okay. fans out there. Back on Gerard. Fan. Here we go. We'll get to everything. Oh look at how she listens. Yeah. She think nothing of what she thinks. Ah, oh, I love this. Just go stumbling through our memories, staring out onto gray streets. I don't want to take up too Wait! much. Wait! Oh, you just, so I, you were getting to the good part. I was going to yell want out. You want the chorus? You want, what do you, yeah. You're going to just do the next verse. Go. The next verse? We'll just go with the next Chris words. Chris is very demanding if you haven't figured it out. <laughs> There's an loneliness inside her. I didn't see do anything to fill it in. No, it's red blood bleeding from on now. Felt like cold blue ice in the hall. She feel like kicking out down the window. The second fire to this life, she will change everything about her. Using her love's bomb yeah. with all colors mixed. Together to gray. This is awesome. Yeah. All right, Gerard, listen, I'm going to call you for a private uh, uh, <laughs> awesome. concert. Are you available this weekend? I am, 100%. Great. Let I'll me just say, this you. is what Chrissy does every night we go out after the show. This is what she does to whatever person is performing at whatever place we're at. Giuseppe chimes in with me. She's very demanding. Right about Dave Matthews. Listen, Giuseppe is like me. We, we like to air sing and play air guitar. And John Mayer. You love right, John, John Mayer. Mayer. <laughs> so, Gerard, Gerard Smith, thanks so much. Gerard, Thank you. we love you. That was amazing. Thank you very much. Love you, Gerard. Thank you. I'll be texting you. Ciao. A lot. She definitely will be. I'll be drunk texting you later. <laughs> All right.
So make sure you answer. So, right, dude, so we're <laughs> here on a Wednesday. I know, I don't like, like to it. to change it up. It was very weird at Miller's. I know. We Usually like we have our group. Miller's. Yeah, we missed uh, Mike Brooklyn and that whole clan. He was at Popeye's. <laughs> Apparently they may have a J-O-B. It can't be here on a Wednesday. Go figure. <laughs> it's a very weird vibe. It was, but it was exciting to see Jerry Parisi and his Yes. Team. Happy birthday, Jerry. Happy birthday, Jerry. Normally when we come here on Fridays, we're the first show of the evening. Yeah. So today we actually weren't the first. I think we're like the third. We're not the last? There's another show oh, after us? No, no we got to be the last. No, we're 8.30. we're the last. We're not yeah, we're the, the last. But anyway, we're here on a Wednesday, and we're super excited because <laughs> it's called Wacky Wednesday. So that's just the way it is. <laughs> that was a nice surprise to have that was a very nice Gerard surprise. write a song for I'm us. I'm glad he was prepared to sing that second song because who was that, Dave Matthews? Dave Matthews, man. She loved Dave Matthews. Come on. Big I can't shocker. believe he flew all the way here from New York City. That was very sweet. That was very sweet that he, he flew jet all the way here. here. Yeah. So what did you guys do? I know you did a lot. Over we the weekend. did a lot, but actually I wanted to ask you because I noticed oh. that you saw a Dave Matthews cover band. Funny you should bring that up. And Vicky actually has the picture. All right. Starting with Nubro Uno. You know me. I always end up meeting the band somehow. You do. So I yelled to them on the stage and I said, <laughs> "Come here." Did you? Yeah, of course. That's how I did it. Oh, and I got backstage. Mm -hmm. No, really? Of course I did. Come on. I love it. Of course it. I did. Do we have the pictures up? Yeah. Vic's, I can't Vic, say. Vic's pulling All right, they're up there. So I met no, the band. I knew, uh, yes. It was awesome. They were an amazing uh, Dave Matthews cover band. They're called Big Eyed Fish. You can find them. Oh, I've heard about Yeah, them. you can find them on Facebook. They have a website. And uh, they're from upstate, though. So they're not here often. So where did you see them? At uh, 89 North in Patchogue. Oh, and I love 89 North. I know you should. It happens know. to be right by my office, StarlingLife.com well, well, and Nice plug, but you should have went to meet us there. Where did you go? <laughs> On uh, Saturday. Oh, well, interestingly enough, once the pictures come up. Are they not up? Saturday night, we actually were celebrating the Kimmel Ditton birthday party at Peter Luger's. Ah, oh, Peter Luger's. Yeah, did you guys exactly. get the, what is it called, the sloth? The sloth. Sloth. Slog. Slog. Did you ask for more slog? Yeah. So wait, wait, wait. We have the pictures. So that's Chrissy at the Dave Matthews cover band. Yeah, uh, that's me stalking them North, after the concert. Which is a very cool place. If you've never checked it out on Patch, I'll go check it out because yep. it's very cool. And there's, um, oh, Raffaella. Okay, Raffaella. Perfect. <laughs> I forced her to go. I saw that. Okay, perfect. And then here's the birthday party. So at Peter Luger's which was amazing. So that's Jeff, because obviously we're celebrating his whole birthday the whole entire month. Yeah, It's Giselle. finally coming to an end tomorrow. What? God help us. I Mine know. didn't last that long. Come on. I know. And there's the family. So you have Marsha Kimmel, Lori Ditton, and Jeff, because they're all celebrating birthdays in the month of March. I okay. love it. Happy exactly. birthday And to then the I have a picture of Jeff's father, Shelly Kimmel, because he always comments how he's never included. Aww. And although his birthday is not in the month of March, we had to include him anyways. Aww. Exactly. And now we have Easter pictures, because clearly that was the next God, one. I didn't do any pictures. You God. didn't do any? That's me and my no. dad. Hector. Yes. Hector. That's me and the bunch, and the fam. There's Frank, Frank Mullen from Suffolk Keys. Frank. Hanging out. And there's my mom, who's getting over a slip and fall. Oh, yeah, how is she? Cheekbone. She's doing better. She doesn't look Aww. so beat up. Shout out to Mrs. Connie. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> Mrs. I hope you feel Mrs. better. This is Lois Henriquez. Yes. Oh, Lois. So what did you do for Easter? I was at my sister's, hung out with my nephews. Oh, nice. Yeah. Drank some Tito's. Of course. Ran outside with my nephews. I haven't seen them in a while. Did they do an Easter egg A lot egg of candy. Hunt? They did in the morning, but I wasn't there for oh, that. They, did they do it inside Aunt or outside? And Kiki was hung over from the night uh, before yeah, watching she was the Dave Matthews. <laughs> when I was at 89 North. <laughs> trying to hang out with the Dave Matthews band. <laughs> when I was going backstage. But, you know, they know who I am. They don't need to know that. Yeah, whatever. No details. So, I can't wait for our guest tonight. I'm very excited because we love Gary Parks. And We've had him here once before. Of us. Exactly, and he was so amazing. We had to he have was. him back. We were like, oh my God, we need him back. He's funny, and I actually went to see Gary speak at one of his seminars yes. at a, I forget, one restaurant. I forget yeah, what restaurant was that, Gary? Jackson. Jackson. That's right. That was very good. He was very uplifting. He's very positive. He's got great relationship advice. So He does. I know a lot of my single friends need the relationship advice, well, so actually, they were excited that he was coming back. Right, and the good thing is it also pertains to people that are in a relationship mm -hmm. because he's also going to be talking about trust in a relationship. Yes, how to build it. key, exactly, how to build it and maintain it. How to keep authority. Yeah, I want to hear about that. I know, when Gary wrote, wrote that, I was like, yeah. yeah. How to keep the upper I want to know. <laughs> Interesting. And Gary's here with his girlfriend, by the way. So he's we'll wearing we'll a lovely that pink works. scarf <laughs> that I want. That I might steal on the way out. They're all in pink, which we love and we appreciate. So that's I know. great. So what's your start loving life tip? Oh, my tip? start loving life tip. How could I forget? 
Oh, My Star geez. Living Life tip is, it's actually one that I brought back. Oh. It's just that kind of show. An oldie but a goodie. An oldie but a goodie. If you love life, life will love you back. I love that. Right? Now, how do we do it? It's so easy. You want to appreciate it. <laughs> right, I know. Because he's like, how I love do you do it? How do you do it? And I'm always like, oh, it's so easy. <laughs> First of all, what you put out, you get back, right? Yes. So if you put out all good things and you appreciate what you have, then you're going to get more things back to appreciate. We are. It's so easy. But if you all complain right. about life and how life isn't going well for you, you're going to get exactly that. All right. So you really want to focus on all the amazing things you have in life. And it could be something as simple as how great it is to wake up to the sun for the last couple of days. Or Gerard Smith singing to you, or serenading you. Or to come into you. tonight's <laughs> Wednesday show and have a guy ready to do our ditty, which he's been preparing all week. Not that we just didn't meet him five minutes ago. <laughs> But, like, how cool is that, right? <laughs> exactly. I thought he was working on it for weeks. Come on. Don't give our secret away. All right. Exactly. So that's, that's great advice. Yeah, so let's hear your I'll try it out tomorrow. So I'll, I'll get back to you on that one. All right, so my bestie of the week, I yeah. love this. Um, I don't, can't remember if I did this before. I feel like you did. but you, I don't think I did. I think I wanted to purchase it, and I couldn't. The, the orders were backed up, and I couldn't order it. It's worth so we've down. all been there. You have the walk of shame. Mm -hmm. uh, you know. One night stand, whatever, I'll say it nicely. Right. And during that walk, you're always thinking, damn it, I wish I was <laughs> more prepared. Right. Well, now you can be prepared, guys. You have uh, the Walk of Shame can. It comes complete with a dress, um, dress. flip-flops, flip-flops. It's all for $34.99. It's very cheap. What kind of dress is that? Uh, it's like a nice little cotton dress. Nice. You got pre-pasted toothbrush, <laughs> wipes. And uh, my favorite thing, though, oh, it's sunglasses. I'm sorry, sunglasses. Sunglasses? Yeah, because, you know, because you got, like, the... Mascara the mas smeared yeah, all over your face. the eyeliner, everything is all over I the place. Know. So you put the, throw the sunglasses on. My <laughs> favorite thing, though, in this thing, I wish I would have thought of this. I know I say it every time, but I really did, is the call, don't call me notes that come in the, come in the uh, can. Wait, what? So you can leave it behind at the guy's house. You can be like, no. call me or don't call me. And it's leave anyway. it behind. And then you just never see him again. It's like your dear John letter to your guy yeah, that you just yeah, hooked up with. Yeah. Don't call me ever again. Uh, or call me. Maybe uh, you want to see him again. I don't know. Maybe he was a nice guy. I love it. So I love it. It's called uh, The Walk of Shame. You go to thewalkofshame.com, and it's only $34.99. But I, it might be on back order. But I've been trying to order this thing for a year. You have? Yeah. Not that you would ever have a Because once it was stand. on Z100, on. Yeah. once Z100 talked about it, that was it. It was, it was sold out. I mean, I thought this was a date night original. I, uh, I got it I feel like, I feel like it was. I got it. I stole it, guys. I stole it from <laughs> Z100. <laughs> so wait, is this can something that you would keep in your car, I'm assuming? Actually, I'm glad you brought that up. The can is small enough to fit in your purse. Oh. So the guy won't even know. Nice. Like, say you end up back in his house, he's like, oh, he thought, he thought he just thought of it while you've right. been thinking about it the whole night. And well, then you whip out the thing, you're like, not a problem. The next day you walk out in a wait. different outfit. Do you give the wrong impression if you carry a one night a one night stand can around? He's not going to know. The next what day. Is he? <laughs> when you show up, when you leave in a <laughs> no. beautiful dress with like. It's not change. a beautiful dress, just a cotton dress with flip flops and sunglasses. And, and it, he's not going to And a note that says, <laughs> I'll flip the card on his while he's laying in the bed still. I'll be like, do not call me. Later. And then do you keep the can on the counter to show that you do this all the time? Taking the can back with me. I paid $34.99 for it. I'm taking the can back, guys. Taking it back. And that's I my best dude. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait for Gary to come up because I have a lot of questions lined up for him. <laughs> I wonder what Gary would say about this can. I know. We're going to ask him. I know. We will. If Maybe somebody did wrong, it to Gary. If guys have the wrong impression when you carry a can around. And I would love to take live callers at some point. Yes. Has a girl ever done this to you? <laughs> I want to know. Has, and left a note to call or not to call? <laughs> yeah, to I not. think that's interesting. <laughs> so clearly you have to sneak out before the guy gets up. Or if he woke up, just be like, hey, great time. Here's the card. Just throw it. Just throw it. Like, <laughs> read it, read like this later. <laughs> <laughs> you Dang. might be texting me or you might not be texting me later. I don't know. Screw we'll you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for nothing. There you go. I love All right, so it. we have a great show lined up. <laughs> we do. We're excited we have Gary back. I know. So I am. Uh, we're going to so get your refill on oh, your yeah. cocktail. Oh, even it's, it's that time, guys. It's late. Even though it's Wednesday night, who cares? All right, let's it's hurry it up. It's on Friday. We'll be right back with Gary. Stay tuned. Hey, I'm Tom Mealy, once again, coming to you from the fabulous Madhouse TV studios here in Deer Park. And this is about the Mousetrap Cafe. Now, I know that everybody's excited. Everybody wants to get in. Everybody wants to book parties. People want to experience what we're going to be offering in the village of Amityville. Unfortunately, folks, 
there has been a slight delay in construction, uh, weather conditions. It's pushed us back a couple of weeks. So just, just bear with us. Uh, trust me, the experience is going to be exciting. But what I want to talk to you about today is the amount of people that are calling looking to book private parties. Yes, we would love to have you and we'd love to have you experience the mousetrap. So this is what I want you to do. Due to the overwhelming response and the amount of people booking, uh, whether it's a, a private party for a, uh, a wedding or whether it's uh, a bar mitzvah, whatever the case may be, I want you to get on the site, go to our contact page, send us an email, let us know the date and the time that you'd like to book and the amount of people. We will respond promptly and we'll get back to you and we'll tell you whether or not that date's gonna be available. Lock it in now. It has been surreal on the amount of people that have been calling us, emailing us, that want to experience this, uh, this, this incredible opportunity to be one of the first to enjoy what we have to offer at the Mousetrap. So, get on the webpage, send us an email, uh, go to our contact page, everything's right there. Let us know, leave your phone number, again, the amount of people and uh, the date that you're interested in, and we'll get back to you right away. In the meantime, stay warm. Spring is coming soon, and so are we. Take care. Yo, yo, what's up, y'all? It's just me, TMC, in the place to be, the greatest MC in history. There will never be an MC greater than me. And right about now, the only place for you to be is with the one. I just was gonna. Oh, we're back. Who knew? Gary Who knew? Parks yes. is in the house. Great yeah. to be back here. Oh my! Are you excited? Were you excited when we asked you? Back? I am so honored that I am on your first Wednesday night show. Oh my God, that's right. I, it's it's like I feel like I'm Columbus discovering <laughs> America all over again. And let again. me just say this: you're the first guest that we've had back for a second time. I know oh, you're really? the only one. Yes. So I would have gotten that call me card. Is that correct? That's right. Yes. Yes. That's yes. right. I thought we left. No? no, I love that know. Gary was really listening, and I love that you wear pink for us. Thank you. I was reminded. <laughs> you my were... beautiful girlfriend. Yeah, we're pink. yeah. We who's love also in pink as well, who That's we love. Exactly, yeah. she's a great girl. Nice. And you, you were a mental conditioning coach for the New York Islanders. Let's repeat that because that's for worth three mentioning. Seasons, correct. For three seasons. Wow. Right. That was were they really jacked up? Did you have to really help them? <laughs> it's it, it, it's when you work with professional athletes, it's 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 like them running a marathon. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's not a sprint mentality. So it's about getting past obstacles along the way and really, you know developing self confidence along the way, yeah. which is what we all need. Exactly. exactly. That's why we have Gary here. Yes. Right. But what we're here to talk about is when you're in a relationship, how do you establish trust quickly? Right. So basically what happens is you meet somebody, right? Yeah. And you have a conversation, you sit down, or, you know, you meet them on one of the thousands of websites. Match.com. Match.com, uh, whatever the case may be. Plenty of shizit.com. <laughs> right. And, and then you go out and you have your, you know, your drink and, and your dinner or whatever. And the question is that how does somebody know they can trust you pretty quickly? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And it's really simple. Oh, oh let's hear All it. All right. And Hold this on. is how it, I'm going to go on the edge of my seat. This is, <laughs> and yet we have to understand is that it's not what we say. Mm -hmm. All this kind of trust building, do I trust somebody, it's really subliminal. Oh. It's subconscious we pick it up. And that's how we can walk down the street and we can see certain things. Mm -hmm. The way we have to understand is one thing, and, and it goes for both sexes, right? A person is going to share certain things with you. And what they're really judging to know if they can trust you is how do you listen? Now, this is what I mean. If you, they make a comment some, about something, uh -huh. and they see a reaction in your face like, oh, really? That means, oh, I can't share much with her, oh. or vice versa. So what we want to do to establish trust is listen without really reacting to what they're saying. I love that. So be you know, neutral? No one's ever no, said that it's before. It's not so much about being neutral. It's as if, I've heard it before. I said, hey, listen, I know we're all messed up. That kind of mentality. Showing that you're understanding. Right. So if someone okay. says, you know, hey, so, you know, yeah, I've, I've been, I've, I'm divorced. Oh, really? It's like, oh, I can't trust to tell you. Because there's more right. stuff I oh, want to tell you. Oh, okay. Right? There's more stuff. Everybody has stuff they want to share that is really judgmental. What they're really going to trust is how judgmental are you right. about me? 
But that's right. a good question. Not to that, you, Chris, yeah, but that's okay. When you're on a first date, though, is that information that you, I mean, divorce, I get, but would additional information be something you'd bring up? On no, a it's date? not, but it sets the tone for, for, for further information. Okay, okay. Right, okay, so okay, what we're yeah. doing, so you go to the dentist, right? Yeah. And when you go to the dentist, he pokes around at the, at the teeth a little yes. bit mm -hmm. to see where, the, where it hurts and where it hurts. That's what we're really doing. We're kind of testing to see what is your reaction mm. okay. to we share certain things. And, you know, if I say to you, you know, listen, you know, I have my Ferrari outside and this and that. I'm seeing that reaction. <laughs> right, you yeah. see that? Like, oh, yeah, let's get <laughs> out of here and go oh, for see, a ride. Two different yeah. reactions yeah. over here, right? I'm I'm like, like, like uh, Chrissy's like, come on, let's go. And he'd be like, bitch, I got my own Ferrari <laughs> outside. Right, let's go exactly. mine. <laughs> but what, this is what happens. We're, men are throwing out bait right. in mm. topics, subconsciously or consciously, mm. and they're seeing what your reaction is. I love Because this. what we're trying to determine is... Mm, what's the easiest access to control you? Oh. Hold on. I've done this. Where's your weak Wait spot? Up. Where's your weak spot? Gary, I want you on every week. Okay. So where's your... Where, <laughs> I don't think he's like, okay. Where's your... But I'm going to play guitar and sing. Where... <laughs> where, <laughs> where, <laughs> where... This is important, right? All right, Because good. what happens is that the way we first meet somebody and set the stage or set mm -hmm. the table mm -hmm. is the determining, determining factor moving on into the relationship oh, now how point. do we move on into the relationship? how do you get uh, say you're into the person mm -hmm. how do you get them to want to move on into okay. a, so a relationship there is a point here's Thank the question you. you have to ask Sorry, yourself Connie, I know you had that's, the no question. that's okay <laughs> do you want to be liked or do you want to be respected Ooh, Ooh. i like that you know what I, I don't need another guest for the rest <laughs> of the show i just want gary every week that was good gary right because what typically happens, we have a human need to be liked, to be accepted, yep. to be loved. And what we're going to do then, by doing that, we're going to try to fit into what the other person may like, right? Yes. So the point of the matter is they might like something. They may, they may love the Giants. Mm -hmm. yep. And all of a sudden, you're a huge Jet fan, and you say, oh, I like the Giants, too. And you're totally, <laughs> you know, full of BS, because we know that, right? I've done that before. You, you have. Yeah. <laughs> With the Giants and the minute. Jets? Uh, no, not with the Giants and oh, the Jets. But with the Mets and the Yankees, because okay. I grew up Yankees, and then I switched to Mets for somebody. Right, so you see my point? <laughs> I did do that. And yeah. the reason you did that is because you want to be liked. Correct. And when, you, when you're liked, you lose the hand. Mm. You want to be respected. Uh -huh. and, Gosh, and but how do being, we do this? What being respected is really being authentically true to yourself. For yourself. And again, we will tell, and this is subconscious or conscious, depending on the person, Really like, okay, you're not real. You're just trying to please me. Uh -huh. I'm throwing stuff out, and you're saying you're agreeing with it. You mm -hmm. like it. And then what you're doing is you have no boundaries. Mm -hmm. And then that sets the tone of the relationship. So that so doesn't it, turn the person on that. No, it doesn't. You okay. see, what happens is, is that you're going to attract what I call the parasite, and you become okay. the host. Ooh, the parasite. Mm -hmm. We love I it. Like right? right? And so what basically happens in that, you're going you're gonna to turn somebody who may not want to be controlling, into a controlling person. Mm. Because they know they can. It's the easiest, you know, we all love sales, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're not going to pay more for a pair of shoes, you know, if it's priced at $40, you're not going to pay 200 because it was of $40. Not. Right. So the more that you try to be liked, you're lowering your value. Oh, my God. So you have to be true to yourself and be respected. And when somebody respects you, then all of a sudden they're going to treat you a lot differently. Mm. How do we get them to respect us? Well, very great question. Very simple. Starting with the mentality, I'm here to be respected, not to be liked. And to be honest about what you love and what you like and all that stuff. Just being true to yourself and authentic mm -hmm. and don't go in for, you know, oh, really, I, wa I want you to accept me, I want you to like me and this and that. And because you want to feel, okay, I want to be accepted. Right. Just be true to yourself. Okay. And then let them be true to themselves and don't react and, to, and or in a judgmental way with your facial expressions, because that's what we're reading. We're, we're talking and totally. we're, we're seeing their facial expressions, mm -hmm. right? And that's what really happens. I mean, imagine going to the doctor, right? And you go to the doctor, doctor, you know what? I had this night last night. I bought my, what's it called? The little what? can. Oh, you the know, walk of shame. The walk of shame <laughs> can. Yeah, you know you've used it before. Come you on. know, exactly. You threw a card at somebody. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I, I, me, don't I, I don't look good in dresses. <laughs> I tried it though. But the point of the matter is, is that you know when you share something with the doctor, the last thing you want the doctor to go, really? Oh my God, I can't. You, know, you don't want to feel like, oh my God, right? He's like, oh shoot, this doesn't look good. Right, exactly. Ooh. So what you want to do? You're like, oh God. Just think about that. How do you want a professional to respond or to mm -hmm. react when you share something that is pretty personal? Right. You're right. Okay. You, it's okay. 
It's cool. I have no problem. I heard it before. So if so, if someone's watching and they can recall being on a date, mm -hmm. and the guy, or vice versa, or the or guy talking to the girl, vice versa, there's information that's shared that really is a red flag. Mm. Right. So you're saying just sit there by, oh, okay, cool. Right. And just be very and, and nonchalant. Here, and here's another great point to it, too. Okay. If you're on a date with somebody, do you want to get as much information as you can as quickly as you can? Yes. Okay. You want to assess Because you want to know, do I want to mm -hmm. see right. this person ever again okay. or not? And the point is, is that what we're looking for when we communicate is what I call subliminal stop signs. Right? I like this. And people right. do it without even realizing it. They'll say like, oh yeah, okay, okay, mm-hmm. Like they'll, they'll, and which is like telling the other person, you can stop talking now. And oh. they will stop talking. Mm -hmm. If you don't give those stop signs, they'll keep talking. Okay. And they'll keep talking. Because they're, mm -hmm. they're saying, okay, let me get more of the stop sign. And what you know, and this is really where to get the upper hand, watch this. Oh, right. Oh, they wow. start Wait, to share more attention. and more personal information. Uh -huh. The person who shares the most personal information. Oh God, that's me already, <laughs> Gary. Well, I know it's going to be bad. What? Is the person who has the weakness. Oh, oh wow. Gary, Interesting. that's me. Yes. I thought it was a good thing I don't really speak. Connie's the, Connie's the man. Yeah. I'm the woman no, in the relationship. Women, but what we end up doing is we, we, oh. have, we, we, we throw up from our mouth, vomit of information Shoot, from our mouth. true. And we throw, throw stuff out, and the man is sitting there. And before you know it, but whoever shares the most personal oh. information You're right. I love has it. the least amount of, it's called authority or power. Mm -hmm. But why do I do that? <laughs> <laughs> you mean, why do the viewers well, right, want to know why? Why do the people that share a lot do that? Because they want to be liked. Oh, wow. And so they cool. figure that, let me share some stuff you like me. It's like overselling yourself. Wow. And then if you oversell yourself, your value But what if down. you're not overselling yourself? You're just, you're just an open person. Listen, you can It's not be, like you're being like, oh, I have this, I have that. Like, I'm not like, I'm like a showy person. No, no. No, not I, I understand your point, right? Not. But I understand your point, right? Right. No. Visualize this. You, you go to a buffet, which is lousy food, and you get all the food at once. Mm -hmm. You go to a fine dining restaurant, and you get the f food in each course separately. Each co right. So look at the information you want to mm. share, and share it like each course. Mm -hmm. mm. Then you move on. To, you know, you don't share everything right away. Ugh, you're right. That's interesting, though. So when you are on a date, uh. what information do you share? I just, I just, I'm an open book. Do you just throw up on them? <laughs> you like, I have a date night show, I do this. I'm like, I don't know, I'm just an, I don't know, I'm just a friendly, open person. It's okay to be friendly, but turn the friendly on to them. And ask you questions. Do Wait, so when they start asking you questions, so what do you like to do? I can do a lot of things, how about you? Turn the questions Ooh. around. I and then you get them to I talk, am. and the more they... I could throw you a don't call me a car. <laughs> and the more they, and so you're getting a great evaluation of who you're right. dealing with. And then you listen very, very carefully, mm -hmm. and you listen to what they say and make sure there's consistency to what they say. Mm -hmm. And a lot of women, a lot of my friends that do online dating, they're sick of it. We, ha we hate it. We feel like we keep meeting the same people over and over. How can you determine if someone's into you right away or they're just out with you to... Have fun and hang out and right. with nothing... More. No strings attached, whatever. Wow, that's... That... <laughs> or how can you tell if they're really into you or they're... Still hung up on somebody else. Gary? When they start... <laughs> Gary? Gary? When Gary. You're asking me like, like five different things. Yeah. One, she one is. Time, okay? She is. She's good at that. Chris and and at let that. me just break it down, okay? Let me just kind of chop it up into little sections. But I don't think you're very calm about it. You're like, no, all right, no, not a problem. No, I, I can handle it. I just want to just get my thoughts into it. Not a problem. You want me to bring Gerard back out? No, and I'm, I'm perfectly fine. When they, when they start talking, you listen. But listen to understand. Don't listen to reply. Which basically means don't listen to say, okay, when can I talk? Okay. Listen to, you be like a detective. Find the evidence that they're sharing with you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And if, they, and if they say, you know, I'm divorced and things like that, so how did that go? <laughs> okay. How did that go? You know, so how long are you divorced for? And if they give you an answer and they don't over explain it, they're cool. They start over explaining okay. anything. Ugh, yeah. Then you know they have some. They have something hung up. So it's yes. some baggage. Right. So you I'm got it. I'm you, glad you said that. Right. So you. That's how you. You can determine. A lot of guys make that mistake though on dates, on first dates. They share everything. You'd be surprised. A lot of men on first dates will sh overshare. Right. And you're like, why is he telling me this? It's if like, a, if any man talks about their mother, run. Oh. Uh, their mother. Yes. Why? Run. Or if they want to marry you after two weeks. No. Run. Well, that all. Yeah. They that, want you to be their mother. But, but if, why about the mom? You don't bring your mom up in the first time you meet somebody. That's weird. <laughs> okay. You know, but what so, about if they bring up exes? That's weird, past. too. It's, 
it's okay to discuss it as if it's part of a, a But if they find a way to history. bring up a certain ex. If they start to bring up a certain ex and they discuss it a little bit and whatever, it's a, it's a red flag. Oh, Adios, shit, amigos. You know, listen, Gary, we want to hear more. Because okay. Chrissy's getting all the juicy stuff now. I know. She's getting into it. She's listen. thirsty for the knowledge. <laughs> we want to hear thirsty more, but we have knowledge. to go to a commercial break. So, guys, refill on your cocktail, and Tito. we're going to be back in a few. Facebook Live. Are you interested in you twisted twisted tonight? Tonight. Yeah, sure, yeah, sure. I see you guys see you guys You see what I'm saying? You understand me? And if you can't whip out answers like that, that man is liable to go to commercial break, punch your fucking mouth loose. You understand me? Time is up, sir. You understand me? You're on. You're you're the man. All right, give me your name now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My name is Willie. Willie, where you working at? We are twisted. We are awesome. We are awesome. We are awesome. Can you repeat that question again? Now, you know it's ultimate. Big bad and pole piece. Colorful roll with Excalibur. Yo, this is Marlon Green with AKA Ultimate. And I want you to watch it. Date night. Every Friday night at 7.30. With Connie and Chrissy. Blah, blah. You know it's ultimate. <laughs> I love it. Blah, blah. You know it's ultimate. And you're back. And you're back. We're back. Gary. How yes. are you? Gary Park. Are you having yes. fun? I'm having a great time. We love it. You're doing yes. amazing. Did you miss being here? I, I really did. <laughs> I, no, totally I did. You did? This was a, That's was, why you were messaging me on Facebook saying, when can I come back? When I, did please, you fly please. in tonight, too? I don't want to beg, but be I'm begging. No. And you ahead. flew in tonight. Did you jet ski here I, with Gerard? I, no, I took a rowboat. <laughs> You were old school. I love it. I no, he love needed it. the. He wanted the powerboat. I gave him the powerboat. I got the little dinghy with the rowboat. I so wait, it. Connie had a good question. So Gary, what happens? Because we see this a lot, especially with our viewers. And me. And <laughs> God, you could say me. When an individual, whether it be a guy or girl, keeps attracting the same type of relationship or the same type of person. What does okay. that mean? How do they break that pattern? And break it. Very simple. <laughs> what does that let's, mean? Let's How think they about it. <laughs> So you're going fishing, and you yeah. put a certain bait on the hook, uh -huh. and you right. attract the same kind of fish. Correct. And you want to attract a different fish. What do you change? Change the freaking bait, people. Bingo. Hello. Hello. Oh, change the bait. Yeah, change yes. the bait. So basically what happens. Don't talk about yourself on the first date like so much. Basically what it is, and I'll go back to what I said before, if you're going to look to be liked and shared too much, mm -hmm. that's one type of bait. Mm -hmm. If you want to be respected and you act as if you're going to keep things in, and then be treated a certain way, that's mm. another kind of bait. Okay. And that's, what, that's, where it, that's the foundation. Mm. It's really simple. You're using the wrong bait. Uh, Change the bait. Make but sense? But why is it bad oh. to be a nice, open, friendly, honest person? Because you don't know the intentions of the other person. Now watch, this is what it comes down oh, to. That was key. With human psychology, an emotional need will always trump and this is not a political comment, will mm -hmm. always trump <laughs> ra <laughs> well, I didn't think it was <laughs> rational behavior. Okay. okay. Everybody has a need to a certain extent of control. We like to be in control. I agree. Because mm -hmm. that gives us a sense of certainty, which is our number one need. And the last thing we want to feel is uncertain. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yep. Yes. And control gives a sense of feeling certain. Oh, my God. Well, <laughs> The five love languages. Did you read the book? No, I didn't. It sounds like you wrote it. 
Okay, yeah. so anyhow, <laughs> must be a smart person who wrote it. <laughs> so, the, so the idea behind it is that when you are starting to be nice and open and weak, Oh, nice and open. Oh, great. I'm, I'm weak. Just, just, just listen. Curse. No, Sorry, you're, 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 you're working from a platform of weakness. Oh, great, Gary. The emotional trigger in someone's, a man's head, mm -hmm. in this case, yeah. would be, oh, I can control you. Ooh. And that overtakes the rational thinking of how I want to treat you. So the desire to control overtakes, you know, a partnership. Right. So you're suggesting that when you're on a date, that you keep it tight-lipped. Yes. And you Don't be so specific. Okay. So are we, just, are just we plenty of time to share pumpkins more. Pumpkins in his house. Plenty of time. Uh, plenty of time to share more and more information. Uh -huh. You don't have to share everything on the first date. Right. That's how you do, you know. And don't be judgmental. Mm -hmm. So but, are we saying that m that's why men love bitches? Ooh, yes. They respect bitches. Ah. So you should just be a biatch. No. <laughs> You see, the, <laughs> and, and, and tell you me, Gary. Yourself. No, you see, what you're using a terminology on a uh, on a behavior which is incorrect. Okay. A woman who wants who deserves respect is called a bitch by men because he wants to control her. So oh. he's going to put a negative connotation to that term. So this okay. way, I don't want to be a bitch. I'll be. I'll then I'll act like being liked. Right. You follow my point? Right. Yes. And that's how come that works. That's why men don't want powerful women around. And the truth of the matter is, men know instinctively that women are very strong sex. They're the stronger sex. Well, I so, will say, not to interrupt no, no. you, but based on the book, Why Men Marry Bitches, and Bitches actually stands for bitch in total control of herself. We love mm -hmm. it. Right, which we is someone that. you respect. Right, which is someone who's not really a jerk. Well, let, let me ask you a question. Okay. If Let's turn the tables around. Yeah. You meet a man. Yeah. And the man is going to do everything for you. Yeah. Okay. Where is he, Gary? No, no, no. Where seriously. is he? <laughs> and, and to the point he has no backbone. Oh, well, yeah, no. Yeah, that's not sexy. You know what I'm saying? No. Exactly. You want a man who is considerate and will do things for you, but you also want a man that has a backbone, has boundaries, and, and, and you know, has self-respect. Yeah, but not mean and not ever... No, self-respect is about being mean. Right. No, just... If, yeah. if there's mutual respect, there's no meanness at all. Well, I think if the guy, the guy has to have his own life. Yeah. And he has to be, has to be confident within himself. And I think that is a turn on for a woman because she's like, oh, he's cool. He doesn't need me. As he for wants... a guy, a guy is more turned on by a girl, as you taught me. Right. It's like With the same thing. Life. Exactly. Right. Like you need to have your life. You need to have your own identity. And then you guys match up and it's great. But and that's you talking about respect. Right. That's what I'm talking about right. being respected. I have I my it. life. This is who I am. This is what Correct. I do. This is the things I like. This is the way I act. This is my craziness thing. This is my issues I have. Right. Okay. And this is the things about me that you know I can negotiate. Because mm -hmm. a guy doesn't right. want a girl who's needy or or in de or dependent on him. No, or he no. doesn't. He doesn't want that. But what happens is that there's a side of that that control where oh I can control her. I can control her. Right. And it becomes it's almost like an out of body or out, it's a, it's a personality situation. Mm. So it's not that he really wants it, but it's, it fulfills an emotional need. So would you say if a girl That's is needy, she's attracting the controllingness from the guy by being needy? He's, she's escalating it. Oh. She's, she's, yeah, she's taking the control aspect. Mm -hmm. And if a guy says, oh, good, I can control her, I can mm -hmm. control her, that sometimes make a, makes a man feel, oh, good, I'm powerful. And, and feeds into his yeah. ego. Right, right. And then all of a sudden, but then what basically happens is he'll get, he, he, it's a drug, so he needs more and more of it. And then you get into a codependent abusive relationship. So why would a person stay in a volatile relationship when they could be with somebody who's, who they had a good relationship with? Why do they go back to somebody who's volatile? When we want to be liked, you're giving the power to the other person because they're, the, they're in the position to validate you. Okay. Mm -hmm. And immediately then, your own self-sense of who you are is really up to how they... Perceive determine you. Yeah. How, how they tell you who you are. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. And so your whole self-identity, which is what our foundation is of our, who we are, is, no, is now in control of someone else. Mm -hmm. And you say, why can't I leave that? Because leaving your self-identity is a traumatic event. Even if they're being treated like crap by matter. that other person? Right. They would they'll, rather be they'll with... They'll rationalize it. They'll, they'll come up with reasons why they'll stay. Because, uh, because, they're, because you're, it's almost like a, a puppeteer controlling a puppet. If I don't have the puppeteer, I can't live. 
And that's, mm. that's really what happens in the mind. Really? Yeah, it's sad, but it's so true. So wouldn't it be a sense of insecurity then? Because obviously well, it's, it's a sense of survival, was... actually. It, it gets oh. into the survival instinct of the brain. Yeah, so it goes deeper than just insecurity. It's about, I don't know who I am anymore because everything that I am is for him or for her. And you lose who you are, so, you right. don't know, so everything about you is based on the other person. And that becomes yeah. part of, you, you know, almost like living. Right. So if I lose you, then I'm going to be like that puppeteer going. I'm going to end up doing it. Right, which thing. is a horrible thing. Does that make yeah. sense? It, totally it really is. does. Yeah. You make a lot of sense, Thank actually. You. <laughs> You're like Dear Abby. <laughs> dear Abby? He How really is. With dear no, Abby? Really. Is she He's like the voice still? of reason. Yeah. We need him on every week. That, but that's, that's the reason why mm -hmm. when people are stuck in a relationship, it's so hard for them to leave because what they right. need to do first is get back their self-identity. Who am I? Mm -hmm. Right. And we, as people, have been conditioned from little children to get who we are but based from what other people. Oh, I know. So oh. we, are grown, we are being brought up and people, you know, our parents, our teachers, our friends are saying, you are, you are, you yeah. are, you are. And we're taking the you are and we're changing it into I am. Mm -hmm. The two most powerful words in the English language is I am. Tony Robbins. Joel right. Osteen. And Hello. Joel Osteen. We went to visit Tony him and Robbins got his book. And Joel Osteen. I love and, him. And I love them both. It's in the Bible. Yeah. Okay. And um, it's actually in the book of Exodus, which is everything to do with Passover coming up and mm -hmm. the Easter and the whole thing. And the point of the matter is, is that we don't know the I am. We don't self-identify who we are. I like that. So people say, you know, you know, and, and you'll see it happen a lot with, with kids in school, right? Mm -hmm. yep. You know, oh, you know, your daughter, she is really good in English, but she's a little bit weak in math. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the teacher say, well, you're not strong in math. Okay, and guess what happens? You become somebody who's not strong in math. Well, mm -hmm. who cares, right? And then that, that becomes your self-identifier, like what which is, becomes your thermostat setting. Yep. Okay? And whatever, however you are told you are, we buy into yep. as I am, and that becomes your identifier. So, so Gary, not to interrupt you, but so I if someone has entered into a relationship based on the parameters that you just said. Right. So a girl... Or, or turns more into that, at least. Right. right. Mm -hmm. So a girl or a guy, whatever the case may be, the other person has the upper hand because they clearly did not do the beginning right. Mm -hmm. And she's watching, and she's like, oh, I screwed that up. Is there any way at this point in the relationship, if it's, you know, fast forward, that she can change the dynamic of the relationship? Yes. Ah, and I'm how does she do it? And I'm saying yes, <laughs> but it's not, you know, it increases the probability of changing. It doesn't guarantee it. Okay, so let's hear it. Okay. She has to first start, or he has to first start, to figure out who they are. Uh-huh. Figure out what they're really about. Mm -hmm. Start doing things for themselves. Okay. I mean, even going Get to, their own life. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't mean going out with your girlfriends and, and leaving everything alone, but start doing things you enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. And you can start small. You know what? You want to watch the football game? You watch the football game. I'm going to go in the room and watch a movie I want to watch. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, in other words, or I want to start negotiating. You want to watch the football game? I'm watching my show tonight mm -hmm. rather than giving in all the time. Mm -hmm. So that's, there's, there's a start. You're starting to start taking territory of your own, what you want to do rather than say, all right, I'll do this instead. Right. Instead of saying, I'll skip my show, to Vanderpump Rules. <laughs> you watch that show? Yeah, I love that show. <laughs> I'll watch the, uh, well, oh, actually, I love the Jets. I didn't know that. All right, whatever. Okay. Whatever they want to watch. I'll watch <laughs> right. whatever sports, sh whatever game with you. Right. When you really don't want to. Right, then don't do it. Or if you're going to do it, watch it. Because but... normally a girl would think, all right, this is nice. You're, the guy will like you more because you're sitting there watching the game with him. Right, but, you know, that's all fine and good. But listen, when you want to watch The Bachelor or whatever show you want to watch. I love The Bachelor. Whenever you show you want to watch. I do want to wa watch that. Yes, whenever you, which is which I'm two hours Monday nights I'm watching. <laughs> Kind of, Thank God we don't have a show on Monday night. Okay, I point, know. The point is that I found out there's Bachelor in Paradise coming on and the Bachelor. I love the Bachelor every, in Paradise. It's like everything. I want I, to in fact, I used to work with one of them. Oh my God, who? Nice. Chris Harrison, the no, host. No, no, no. It was, it was one of the guys who was. Oh my God, who? Anyhow, he was, the guy that was engaged or getting married to the other chick. Which was his name? Don't tell me the guy that I love with the dark hair. No, no. It was like he was a bunch of shows hair? and he came back. I, I love a lot. Shows, oh whatever. my God, the annoying guy that yes. always shows up? Yes, him. He's good looking with the blondish hair? Yes, him. You know him? Yes. Set me up with him. I love, I love, okay. I've always been attracted to him. He sounds like he has a lot of problemos. Chris Bobuski. Yeah, yeah, Bobuski. right. He used to work for the Islanders, correct. Shut up. No, he did. 
Oh my god, I'm attracted to him. <laughs> All right, we'll set So anyhow, so the point of the matter is. <laughs> I love that you don't yeah. care about me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like, you know, you know like Gary. He always like, shows up at figure out, Figure out yourself. <laughs> Go out and find yourself. Stop being dependent. I love him. Stop being he's dependent very, on people. He's very attractive. Dependent on yourself. <laughs> Chris, the, if you're watching, I love it. The point of the matter. <laughs> yeah, not wrong. The point is, so you start have to start to take back <laughs> All right. things in your life that are important to you, right. and right. you start to do that, and you put boundaries up. Right. Learn to say no, and the other person may not like it. Yeah. So but now, too bad. right. So but what's going to happen is the other person is like, "Whoa, what's going on?" So then, how do you react to that? Mm. Um, Good question. You'd say, "Listen, you get over it." <laughs> <laughs> Here's you're, my card. You're, you're I'm man. watching uh, you're Bachelor. Man, you'll get over it. <laughs> okay. And, and, you know, you start, that's the way you become a partnership. You know, see, that, and that's the thing. You don't know that somebody's not being um, sincere. How do you know if, like, the guy, or I'm sorry, I know you always say the guy. It could happen to the, the guy, too. But <laughs> We know what you mean. Most importantly, it's the guy doing it to the girl. How do you know if the guy's not being sincere or not? Um, you're thinking that you're being, like, you're having a great time together when you're out. And so you're being like you're being very open with the person, but on the inside you're saying the guy has an agenda. So you think he? So how do you know if he's being authentic or he's correct or he's manipulating yes. by doing, yes. by following the rules of the book? Buy her flowers, listen, do all these things, mm -hmm. whatever the case may be. You really don't know in the very beginning. In any relationship, before you make a next step commitment, give it four seasons. Mm. Oh, let's hear about those four seasons. Yeah, for a full year. Oh, nice. Oh, okay. Right, four seasons. Okay, and the reason why four seasons are important is that you're going to, a person in, in, in real intention cannot be held down. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, it can be. So if the person, if the person, you know, his intention is just to play you and, you know, try to get mm -hmm. you into bed or, you know, spend time with you is not serious. Mm -hmm. Okay, in the very beginning, they seem like great. They do everything right. Okay. And then you start to see a few things. The full, full? the full intention will start coming through. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then you start to really see what they really are about. So it takes time. What if you hang out with them and they don't really contact you a lot? What would you tell somebody? That's a sign. Yeah, that's a sign. A lot of friends of mine, they do the same thing. They're hanging out with somebody, but they're like, oh, he reached out. We hung out this week, but I, I haven't heard from him this week. Well, then why are you still Adios, hanging out? Adios, amigos. Exactly. What do you well, think? Listen, Gary, Why this, do is, guys a, this do that? is important. We want to hear it, but we got to go to commercial. And this is too important to like. So, wait, let's commercial. leave everybody in suspense. I will give you that answer when we come back. Ah, mm -hmm. Gary knows everything too well. We only have five minutes, according to my clock. <laughs> Your clock is wrong. I'm just kidding. Commercial. Being a fireman is more than just putting out blazes and giving kittens CPR. Sometimes my duty demands I fan the flames, like when a call comes in from a lady who needs immediate assistance. Maybe she needs help with that computer thing. Maybe she wants to go antique. Could be as simple as understanding that walking in heels is... It's hard. Aussi simple que l'été dernier à Paris. C'est sympa. Maybe it's ladies night in, and she wants a simple, delicious recipe for margaritas, with a twist. First, a can of limeade. Now hold on to this, you'll be using it. Side note, kittens make everything better. Next, add water. Now, a bottle of light beer. It's not, shh. Trust me, I'm a professional. And last, and most important, Sousa Blue Tequila. Now, mix it up. Ole. Yes, that's what I'm trained for. Whether it's to help her choose leggings or pants, telling her leggings are pants, or discussing leggings and jeggings versus pant pegging at her next ladies' night in, I'll come to the rescue. Don't call me a hero. Just call me. Let me know what time.
we're not back yet. And we're back! Gary's back. Gary Parks. Are you learning something? No. Of course. Are you, are, is, 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 are you picking something up? Yes. Here? Yes, we are. I am. Good. I what's, need you, what, to, li I need you to live with, you? with me. Feeling respected you so far? versus well liked. What were you just talking about the break? What's oh, what we look out for. But how can we know if they're into us or not? Just by their behavior. Behavior oh, you were saying that actions speak louder than yeah, words. No, yeah. it, well, action, anybody can say anything. Exactly. And, it's their, and they do. It's, and it's their behavior over right. a consistent period of time, right? And that will really tell the, what, who the person is. Now, here's something very important mm, uh, like to that. understand. I can't wait to hear. <laughs> Everybody has triggers from past relationships. Mm. So a person's behavior, there's something called the rule and the exception. Okay. All right? So let's say you're with somebody and... You know, they always call you on time, and they're always considerate. I like that person. Right? Watch. And then <laughs> all of a sudden, one time, they don't do that. Then uh -huh. I think they're dead. Right. No, no. Ditch. All of a sudden, you know what? He told me he's going to call me. He didn't call me or this and that. And it happened just like once or very You'd rarely. You'd be concerned. You'd be like, oh, I hope No, no, no. But okay. the point is, is that if you have a trigger from a past relationship, of uh, someone who did that, uh, you, now you're going to take that exception, which I happened once, uh, and you're going to turn it into a rule. I got Gary. Okay. And that's <laughs> when you start to escalate something yep. that now you're starting to say, that's your behavior. No, it's really not. You're just adding your past experiences oh, right. into okay. something current. So you have to take oh a step back and evaluate really what it is. Right. I like okay? that. Uh -huh. Now, the, when you make a decision of what it is, and you're in an emotional state. Don't make a decision in an emotional state. Oh, shoot. What do I do? Call Connie? No, you call Connie. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Take it. That was a wait, genius laugh. <laughs> wait for the emotion. Wait for the emotion to die okay. down. Uh -huh. And then evaluate it. All right. Because the emotion is, a, is based on trigger. It's based on reaction. It's based on conditioning from before. Past experiences that may have nothing to do with what the situation is with now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay? And that's one of the most important things. But you really see someone's intention, look at their behavior. But don't expect perfection. No. Okay? You didn't really say that with such confidence, <laughs> by the way. Well, I, <laughs> no, I, I really? expect respect the same way I would respect somebody and be honest and okay. open. And, and this I comes would, to the next part. I would part. expect the same okay. in return. You ever play like a board game like Monopoly of or what? Candy Cane? Okay. Did you ever play that one? Well, Candyland. Candyland, Candy Land. Candy Land. Land. whatever. Let's talk about Monopoly. You know, in Monopoly, <laughs> like in the game Monopoly, for example, yeah. you know, some people put money <laughs> on like Candy Land. Some people put money on free parking. Some people don't. And before free you start, parking. I, I have to do it on boardwalk or boardwalk. And sometimes the question is, before you play, I'm the in game, jail. Before you play the game, <laughs> right? You have something called. Let's, what, what are the rules of engagement? Uh -huh. I used to love that show, by right? the way. A relationship, you have to have rules of engagement. Mm -hmm. What your expectations are, and make sure the other person commits to those expectations. Mm -hmm. But they don't. Then you then call you, them on their commitment. We just leave. How do we get them to commit? How do you get them to commit? Well, first right. of all, attract the right one that wants to commit. Oh, let's talk about that. How do we attract the right one? The right one again, and I'll go back to what I said before. Because <laughs> Connie knows. <laughs> she we listens. have three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Is put out... Be, get respected. Don't be uh, light. Be respected. Yeah. Once well, you're most res people don't be clear that. about who you are. That's be clear it. who you are. Stick to your guns. People are going to try to take you off your game uh -huh. to play their game. Don't do that. Just stick to who you are. So don't give a lot away, basically. That's what I like, dude. I don't need your Just Ferrari. don't give a lot I got away. My own. Right. Right. Just share whatever is important. Don't overshare. Mm -hmm. Know that you have your own life. Okay. And that you're not going to give up everything for someone else. Uh, no. Or and if you already did, start taking some of it back. Mm -hmm. And then you sh and then you then you, you negotiate, for lack of better terms, the things you do, and that's called a partnership. That's and healthy. Now, now, Gary, don't you think there's a time where a person may realize that the relationship they attracted is not the ideal relationship? Yeah. So then you get out. Exactly. So what's the best way to handle that? To get out. Yeah. You buy your cans. <laughs> <laughs> Send the don't call me card. You, you, I mean, depending on the relationship and the person, you want to have a conversation. You mm -hmm. say, you know what? It's not working anymore. It's time for them to move on. Mm -hmm. And then you leave. How do you break up with somebody? You tell them face to face. Okay. And you say, that's it. Moving on. And what do you say to those girls that or, boy, or guys who are not strong enough to do that? And like, ah. They have to start to see better opportunities. Uh-huh. And they have to start to see that they deserve something better. Mm -hmm. okay. 
And that's one of the things they have to we start love to that. see. Yeah, you have to have to start to realize that they deserve more. Mm -hmm. Or do you think the guys that are with the girls that know in their heads that they, that that girl's not the one, right? But the girls thinking, oh, I really like this guy. It's going to go somewhere. But he obviously knows it's not going to go anywhere. How do we how do we handle that type of person? Are you talking about you being the girl or yeah. you knowing the girl? Uh, no, uh, we're the girl. You're the girl. We're with somebody <laughs> who we like. Right. But he probably already knows, like, this isn't the girl that I'm going to be with long term, but she's in the meantime. Right. How do we how, figure that out? How, how do, do you avoid being the yeah, girl like, in the meantime? How do meantime? we figure that out? Like, we're giving our all to this person because he's making us think that he's Don't into us. Don't give him that, your all. Well, first, but, right? but he's Let making him, you think that he's into you. Well, how is he making you think that? By telling you the right things or by doing the right things? Telling you. Well, again, let's go back to the second. Understand. Don't listen to the words. And I'm saying you don't, not, not, don't call him a liar, but say, okay, those are the words. Mm -hmm. Now it is knowledge, Back awareness, up, and action. Back it up, dude. Back it up. And then you have to start to evaluate okay. and see consistency. Mm -hmm. And see how you deal with challenges in your life together more than just that. And, you know, okay. it, it, you see how your life continues on. If you saw him once, once a week and then it's twice a week. I mean, if you still, yeah, you know, a great relationship. How often do you see him once a week? It's the same thing you had before. There's no progress. Mm -hmm. You got to see progress right. in the relationship that sure. you are happy with. That's what I mean. Like, how does a girl tell, like, is this going anywhere? Because if she's or... happy or not. <clears throat> if she feels fulfilled, she's getting what she wants. Mm -hmm. And you can also tell, measure the amount you rationalize. Mm -hmm. I like that. Wait, say it one more time. That... When, we're, when we're in a situation that we know is wrong, and we don't want to move, we rationalize the hell out of it. Uh -huh. Now and, that's cheap. And that, is a, Everybody and that is a sign with anything. Mm -hmm. you, I mean, right now I'm rationalizing why I'm still here. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm I joking. Love I love that. Hey, you're also a comedian. You're going to no, be a but, brokerage this weekend. I love it. That was genius. But, 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 but seriously, oh, man. see how much you're rationalizing <laughs> yourself, and which is what you're really trying to do is deal with the unhappiness and rationalize it away. If you're doing a lot like of rationalization... That. Right. We, that is a clear red flag mm -hmm. that something is wrong. I love it. I right, love that perfect. we're ending off on that. All right, so Gary, where can people find you? that's what everybody goes through. Go so to awesome. GaryParks.com. We have a minute. Oh, no, we got yourself. Yeah. We, GaryParks.com. Okay. And you can check How do we out. hire you? <laughs> Go to GaryParks.com. That's it? I can't call you? Do you have no. a number? <laughs> what not, the frick? No. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can text me. Uh, All can right. I, can I say a word about? Do we have any time, or we're just about yeah, to, we got, got, you got, no. you have a lot of time. Okay. So anyhow, the point of the matter is that people do a lot of texting now. Yes. Yeah, I and love email, texting. You know, people love to text. I love texting. Let me explain about texting. It's yeah. annoying. Well, let me it. tell you about texting. And this is like a lot of the online challenges that come up. Mm -hmm. And I brought it up a little bit in the last show that I was here, but I, really th I think I it's important. You. I want to, I want to, you know, repeat it if I may. Sure. The lowest form of a person to be exposed to rejection. The safest mm -hmm. is texting. The lowest form of commitment is texting. Mm. So if, if a man is texting a woman. Mm -hmm. This is great right now. He's feeling great because I don't have, to, I, I don't have fear of rejection. Hold on, this is important, Vicky. This is the lowest form of rejection. The girl is saying, oh, this is great. I don't have to commit and vice versa. Right. So what you always want to do is always up the communication Up style. Up the ante, dude. So if you're texting, start talking on the phone. When you start talking on the phone, meet in person. Love it. Don't start, get stuck on one form of, you know, the texting too long. All right, we're going to end on that. We love it. Don't freaking text too much. And by the way, it's always guys that do it, not women. Happy Wednesday. <laughs> thank you for joining <laughs> the you, best Gary. show and, and ever. I, thank you for having me I on love you, Gary. Of Wednesday show. Yeah. Thank you, Gary. Yeah. Will you be back? Selfie time, if you, of course. When, whenever you want me to. Are you kidding me? I want you on every show. <laughs> of course. Thank you. And we're You're my dear Abby. We didn't do our selfie. I know. We're going to do it after the cameras stop rolling so we can get our props. Ah, oh, shoot. Oh, Hold on. Not. I don't have my prop. I know. We don't have our props. We need a phone that works. Oh, I should have Gary's bow <laughs> Good job. Good job, freaking Gary. We Thank loved you. it. Gary, you're awesome.